All right, thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Michael McKean, VP of Business Development at CDI Technologies, and I'm excited today to be joined by Bobby McDonald, the founder and CEO of Parlay Ideas. So today we're gonna to be discussing transforming class discussions with one-to-one -one devices. For those of you that may not know, uh, CDI Technologies is in a real exciting place. We just uh, finished um, or just starting the new phase of our rebrand. Um, and we've been in the education space now for over 30 plus years. And we have a desire and a love of learning um, and making sure that uh, no student gets left behind when it comes to education and technology. And some of the simple things um, that CDI Technologies focuses on is our expertise and resources to do a lot more with less. Um, so connect with best in class devices, deploy, making device management easy, and inspire students with the best tools and applications um, so they can all enjoy the education process. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Bobby, the founder and CEO of Parlay. So Bobby, it's all yours. Thanks, Mike. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm gonna to try to keep this uh, to be under an hour, maybe 40 minutes, and then we can leave room for Q&A, maybe get everyone out of here early as well um, to go and enjoy the rest of your afternoon or back to work, whatever it is you need to be doing. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. And um, I guess I just wanna frame the conversation today by talking a little bit about our relationship with CDI and also how we sort of position ourselves within the whole suite of educational technology tools uh, and the whole suite of educational technology in general. So you have classroom technology, um, which CDI provides, and, and uh, I'm sure a lot of schools and school districts and teachers here have one-to-one -one devices or, or are approaching one-to-one uh, -one devices in their classroom. At Parlay, what we really, really care about is classroom discussion. It's, a, it's an age-old activity. It's one of the sort of best pedagogies, which we'll get into. And at Parlay, the way that we think about it is that our work with CDI really helps make that, marry that. It makes that relationship possible. So we take that classroom technology and we apply it to classroom discussions to really, really make them more meaningful, measurable, and ultimately inclusive. And again, as I said, we'll get into that a little bit more today. Um, but before we do, I just want to say sort of like why discussions? Why are discussions a thing that as, a, as an organization uh, we've decided to focus on and as teachers and educators, we believe it's also important to focus on. And the first reason is really simple. And that is that discussions uh, double student achievement. And I'm sure a lot of people here are quite familiar with John Hattie's work on visible learning. And they studied, in that study, it was a giant meta-analysis of over 250 different things that educators could do, parents could do, teachers, school systems at large to drive learning outcomes. Discussion is consistently across multiple iterations of this research. Discussion, discussion is consistently in the top 5% of all things you can do to drive student achievement. And if you look at it through the statistics, discussion doubles or more student achievement compared to what you would call your typical or average teaching strategy. So this really affirms something that I think a lot of people really understood intuitively, and that was that discussion improves learning outcomes and drives student achievement in the classroom. So the research does support that. And the next thing, and perhaps even more important, uh, is that discussion prepares students for life. So the way that we like to think about it is that discussion teaches us to think and communicate our ideas. It teaches us to think about what other people are saying and to think about the concepts and, and the, the content that we're learning in the classroom and things that are going on in the world and teaches us to communicate our ideas. And in doing so, in an active discussion, whether it's online or in a face-to-face -face conversation, we're meant to consider other people's perspectives and really ultimately empathize with those perfect perspectives and reflect on them to really understand that truth is something that's, that's hard to get at and that if we work together and ultimately compromise and collaborate, we can find solutions to big and complex problems in the world. And this is a really important mental framework in our mind for students as they go into college of course, if they go into their careers or into the boardroom, 
and as members of a family, members of a community, whatever the case may be, if they're going to a voting booth one day, this is the kind of thinking or mental framework or a version of it that we think is really important. And these are the things that that discussion teaches. So these are the two reasons why we really care about discussions at Parlay, which begs the question, why Parlay? What's unique about Parlay? So at this point, I'm actually going to run a poll. So if anyone is, uh, is available and participating, I'm going to launch the poll right now. And if you don't mind, just pick uh, one answer to the question. So the question is, on average, what percentage of students willingly participate in class discussion? So this is uh, sort of up to you to choose, and we'll just give it uh, a few seconds here to, um, to see what the, the results show. All right, just a couple more seconds while everyone takes the opportunity to vote in the poll. All right, I think we can end it there. So I'm going to end the poll and we can see the results here. And it looks like about 46% of the participants think that about 50% of students participate. Um, one says 75% and then there's an even split between 10% and 25%. So I can share those results with everyone right now. So you can see the, the number one um, number was about 50%. So um, with that, the truth is, is that external third party research shows that about 25% of students actively willingly contribute to a class discussion. Now at Parlay, we've done some of our own research with teachers and students that we've worked with, and that number was closer to about 40% in those. So somewhere between 25 and 40%. So I think most people had a pretty good instinct. But if we move ahead with Parlay, we're seeing discussion participation rates consistently over 75, 80, 85, 90% in your average class discussion. This is research that we did this past uh, fall with schools and school districts in Canada as well as the US. And so Parlay makes discussions more inclusive, which is really, really important because you have this great, these great benefits that come from class discussions, but if not all students are participating, then it's hard to get everyone engaged. It's hard to justify ultimately doing the activity. So with all that said, uh, how does Parlay work? So in this instance, I'm gonna go into a short demo so you can see uh, at a high level what, how Parlay works and how Parlay operates in the classroom from the teacher's perspective. Um, also, I'll say that we're going to be putting a form out at the end of the uh, at the end of the presentation, where if you'd like to sign up for a more in depth demo, you're you're welcome to do that as well. So um, the way that Parlay works is there's sort of three main components to Parlay. The first one is the Parlay Universe, which is a content library where teachers can explore ready made discussion topics for their classroom. Then we move into an online roundtable, which is a written face-to-face -face conversation or discussion, or excuse me, a written online discussion where students contribute through writing and they build on and challenge each other's ideas. This is a great blended learning activity. And then finally, we move into the live roundtable, which is a way for teachers to track face-to-face -face conversations in the classroom and to measure and assess student participation in real time. So I'm gonna show you what each one of these looks like independently. In a perfect world, you might use these in a continuum in the classroom, but of course, many teachers use each one of these components, uh, like I said, individually. So with that said, I'm going to leave this screen and go over to the Parlay universe. So what we're looking at here is the Parlay universe. And in short, it kind of works like Netflix. So you'll see you have different collections, which are groupings of roundtables that are organized into logical themes. So in this case, we have some featured roundtables. Here we have roundtables on the sustainable development goals. Here we have discussion prompts on journalism and media, heroes and villains in US history, which is a really popular one. We have introductory discussions in economics. So there's lots of really great, rich discussion topics. So we can click on any of these topics. So I'm gonna pick on, uh, pick exploring the UN sustainable development goals. So what we have here is a ready-made discussion prompt that the teacher can in one click publish to their Parlay classroom. So just a little bit about the background. So what we try to do with these discussion prompts is we use a consistent structure or scaffolding to give teachers uh, a very simple 
prompt to share with our students. So we say, what are we discussing today? We talk about why it's important or relevant. We provide content and multimedia. So in this case, we're looking at the United Nations website and a TED talk, as well as an article about the sustainable development goals that come from sort of external, um, come from uh, sort of outside and around the web. And then we create discussion questions. And these discussion questions are meant to get students to be thinking critically, to be doing their own research, to be formulating their own ideas and opinions, and ultimately even proposing solutions to real world problems. And then finally, there's the peer feedback element where each student has to go in and build on and challenge each other's ideas in a sort of constructive manner. So this is an example of one of the roundtables in the library. Now, Parlay has over 150 roundtables in the library now. But what we do is for teachers that can't find something that meets their needs, they make a request to Parlay and it's part of the service that we offer. And our team will using this framework and that teacher's specific context, grade level, subject area, topic, et cetera, build a custom roundtable for them and put it into their profile. So here's a great example of a teacher named Katie. She's from um, Chicago and she uh, asked us, excuse me, from Illinois, not from Chicago, but from the state of Illinois. And she asked us to create some roundtables for her grade seven class uh, on the, um, Early, on early American history. And so you'll see we've created five roundtables for her. So she would give us the content and then we would ultimately put these into her personal portfolio. So this one is a, is a discussion topic about uh, the Barbary pirates. And so we would put this into her portfolio. She could then say, you know what? I love this roundtable. I'm gonna add it to my class. So in doing so, she would just simply press create roundtable and then she would select her demo class in this case and boom, this is now published to my classroom. So I'm just gonna expand this out so we can focus in on that. As a teacher, we can edit these as well. So you can edit the round tables as much as you need to so you can change any of the content. You can also create your own and start from scratch. So you don't need to use Parlay's specific discussion topic. So you can create your own from scratch as well. And then let's say in a perfect world, we're ready to invite our students to this discussion. Now we're inside of the online round table and we very simply come here and invite our students. Now we do have integrations with Google Classroom. You can also invite students from directly within Parlay or share a hyperlink with them. So really, really easy for students to get started. Parlay also has single sign-on with Google uh, and Microsoft, so students don't have to create an account and manage another password and all that fun stuff. So with that, I'm actually gonna fast forward into an online roundtable that's kind of in full swing so you can see what it looks like as these conversations unfold and develop. So in doing so, I'm going to move over to this one. It's called the Trans Mountain Project. It's about um, actually a pipeline that they're building or trying to build uh, in the, the Western part of Canada. So if you look here, I can see the discussion prompt. So what are we discussing today? Why is it important? We have videos, articles, discussion questions, et cetera. So it's, again, that's the prompt. Now each student had to respond a unique submission to this discussion prompt. And so you'll see all the student submissions here. So Simone de Beauvoir's submission is here. We can scroll down and see Da Vinci's submission, Michelangelo's submission, Louis Pasteur's submission, Charles Babbage, Amelia Earhart, Roberta Bondar, Florence Nightingale, et cetera, et cetera. You'll notice that these are actually people from history and not just regular students. That's because Parlay has a secret identity feature. So in the discussion, every student gets randomly assigned a character from history, and that is their pseudonym for the discussion. Now, what this does is it makes the discussion far more inclusive. It gives every student the opportunity to put their ideas out there. Maybe English isn't their first language. Maybe they're not sure about the specific idea that they're putting forward. Maybe we're using this in a, in a modern languages classroom, and students are sort of just getting their hand around the vocabulary and the sentence structure and all that kind of stuff. So with parlay, every student has these pseudonyms. And that has two effects. One, as I said, it makes the discussion more inclusive. But two, it also makes the discussion more fun. So they're engaging with one another. Charles Babbage is commenting on Amelia Earhart and so on and so forth. From the teacher's perspective, we can of course see who's who. So Alex, Yuna, Miranda, Mia, etc. For obvious reasons, the teacher needs to be able to, to see uh, who's saying what in the discussion. So let's click into a specific student. So let's click into Michelangelo. Here we have Michelangelo's submission. So he has included a video and an image and an article perhaps, and as well as his own personal opinion about what we should do with this pipeline. And now I can see here that some students gave feedback. So this is not a very good example of feedback, but this one here from Cleopatra is a really, really rich feedback. 
And if we can see the replies and other students building on and challenging Cleopatra's ideas. With Parlay, when students go to give each other feedback and build on each other's ideas, if you see here, they answer these guided feedback questions. So in this case, do you agree? Why or why not? What did you like? And then we give them a sentence stem as well to, to uh, tell the student how they can improve. And so what this does is this gives structure and scaffolding so that students give more meaningful and constructive feedback and they learn to be really responsible digital citizens. And they learn what it means to make a meaningful contribution to an online discussion and to help build on and challenge each other's ideas in that, like I said, constructive manner. So the teacher can configure these to suit their own needs, just like they can configure the prompt and the discussion questions to suit their own needs as well. And so just moving forward, if a teacher wants to say, okay, I really like Michelangelo's post, you'll see it's, I liked it so much that I start it as a model submission and you can see the different model submissions down here on the left-hand side. And if I scroll down, I can also assess Michelangelo. So if I click on the assessment tab, that takes me to a place where I can use my own criteria, so my own different point types, my own rubric that I can create and define to evaluate Michelangelo's contributions. But I don't just want to evaluate him based on his initial post. I want to scroll down and see what other comments he made. So in this case, he responded to Louis Pasteur. In this case, Aristotle. In this case, Alexander Graham Bell and Cleopatra. So I can see who, that, who he commented to and what was the quality and ultimately substance of that contribution. And I can compare that to the class average as well. And if I come here and I go to give feedback and or assessment, I do so on the grounds of that student's holistic contribution to the discussion. So really, really, really easy way to get that summary information. Now this is the, the Parlay Online Roundtable is used in a variety of circumstances. It can be used as an online only experience. So a lot of schools and, and, and teachers will use Parlay as a way to um, engage students after class or outside of class over the course of a week or a month in an online discussion. A lot of teachers will also use this directly inside the classroom. So they'll have a 45 minute session from start to finish. The students watch the video, read the article, submit their ideas and comment on each other's posts. So it can, or it can be used as some combination of both. So you can have start in the classroom with your post and continue the comments outside or start outside the classroom with your own research and your own post, and then you comment on the inside. So there's a lot of different ways to use the online roundtable. It's a very flexible tool, and it's used from grade five right up all the way to grade 12, of course, and in a broad range of subject areas. The last but not least in the online roundtable is the summary. So if I click on view summary, what I get is a really comprehensive overview of the whole discussion. Oftentimes teachers will take this and they'll put it up on their on their board and you'll see here Okay class. There's hundred percent participation Over the main ideas in the discussion. We can see those come out of the word cloud We can scroll down and see what the different model submissions were for each one of the students So we can talk about these with the students in the class and then we have the number of comments per student And then finally we have the word the the word cloud excuse me the chord diagram so what this does is this gives an overview of all the different students in the class and how much they participated and who they engaged with. So in this case, you have uh, the number of comments a student made is in indicated by how big they are around the circle, and then the direction is the flow of their conversation. So I'll give you an example. If I highlight over this one here, I can see one comment from Alice to Vihan. So Alice is the brown going over to Vihan in the blue, and then one comment from Vihan over to Alice. So you get an understanding of the direction of the conversation and students that are building on each other's ideas and responding to one another. And generally, this is a very balanced conversation where lots of people contributed opinions. So this is a great way to introduce students to what a really holistic and, and ultimately inclusive conversation might look like, and also to introduce them to things like data analysis. So this is a great, great way to summarize all the information in the online roundtable. All right. So with that, that's the online roundtable. I'm going to move into the final stage of sort of Parlay's core activities, and that is the live roundtable. And the live roundtable is a little different than the online roundtable in that it happens face-to-face -face inside the classroom. So in a live roundtable, students are actively, instead of re reading and writing, they're speaking out loud and contributing to the discussion as participants. So from the teacher's view, what this looks like is... I have all the students in the class discussion. 
And when students want the chance to speak, they quote unquote, tap into the class discussion. So you'll see that Alex is tapped in right now, Daniel's tapped in, Ivan's tapped in, and Harpreet's tapped in. Let's say I was Alice and I wanted to introduce a new idea to the conversation. I'd very simply click new idea on my end and boom, now I can see Alice has joined and she wants to contribute a new idea to the conversation. And so as Alice does that, she then begins to speak and contribute to the conversation. Now as a teacher, I can click on Alice and in real time, I can leave notes. So I can take notes about her participation in that student driven verbal discussion. I can also assign points based on any, again, of my own defined criteria. So in real time, I can assess and evaluate and take notes on Alice's participation. Additionally, I can nudge Alice. Let's say she was a quiet student and not participating. I can nudge her to say, hey, I'd like you to come speak now. And then finally, if a, a student wanted to hear, for example, Ivan speak, they might click on the little ear icon. So you'll see here, this just went from one and now two, and students can vote on other people that they'd like to speak. So what this does from the students end is it asks them to declare the kind of contribution they'd like to make to the discussion. So they can introduce new ideas like I did with Alice. They can also challenge, build on, and question each other's ideas in real time. So it's that declaration of wanting to speak and then getting the space to do so, either taking it in a natural flow of the conversation or through the voting system and the teacher moderating the conversation or perhaps another student, making sure that every student gets the opportunity to participate. When Alice has done her new idea, she would simply tap out and remove herself from the circle. So as the conversation unfolds, it's very student driven and they're tapping in and tapping out. All the while the teacher can manage the conversation as they need to and take notes on and assess students in real time. So a great tool for fishbowl discussions, for Socratic circles and other sort of seminar style learning where you really have students driving that conversation. Then at the end of the discussion, the teacher gets really rich data again at the end, once it's all over. And so I can go into the class summary data, a sec here, it's got a load, and I can see the participation rate. So 66% participation rate in this particular discussion. And then I can see how much time each student spent inside the circle. So in this case, Alice spent seven minutes, Jake spent six minutes, Miranda, Yuna, Vihan, Alex, et cetera, they all spent two minutes inside the circle. So in a lot of ways, it's very similar to what we saw for the online roundtable in that we have we have the, the, the balance of the conversation, how much time students spent inside the circle. We can scroll down and we can see there's an average of one tap in per student and we can scroll down and see who had the most tap ins. So in this case, it was Alice had the most tap ins. So she had one new idea and one challenge. And we can actually filter down to see for all the individual students in the classroom who had the most new ideas, who challenged the most et cetera, et cetera. So it's a great way to get a really rich understanding of the overall participation in the class discussion. So that's how the live roundtable works. Like I said, it works face-to-face -face in the classroom. Now it is uh, a bit of a thing to wrap your head around. It, it really, the rubber does hit the road when you see it live in person. And in the interest of trying to, trying to be brief today, I'm not gonna go into too much more detail, but like I said, happy to go into, uh, into more detail in a further conversation. Uh, if anyone would like. And again, I'll share a link for that at the end. And I guess the last, last but not least uh, that I did want to show uh, is student reports. So when we go to student reports here, and I'm going to pick, pick Angela, we can see trending information from Angela over the course of a year or a semester. So in this case, we can see that Angela responded to this roundtable. She made two comments and she received seven points. And we can see different roundtables throughout the year so we can understand how our feedback and how our interventions into Angela's participation in class discussion changes over time, both for the live and the online you'll see here. And then we have a chronological list of all of the conversations we had. So this is Angela's participation from our current events journaling discussion. This is Angela's participation in a live roundtable from our, um, from our unhealthy foods discussion. So you get a really, really great summary of all the different sort of uh, contributions this is great for parent-teacher night. It's great if you're sitting down with a student and just sort of going over their, their engagement. So a really great way to capture that data. All right, uh, with all that said, I did want to go over a few more things 
about uh, Parlay and how we work with different schools. So like I said, that was a really high level summary. I wanna talk a little bit about the membership. So ultimately how we work with teachers and schools uh, and districts to transform their classroom discussions. And so there's three sort of main components to it. Of course, there's the software subscription. And you guys just saw a really brief overview of what the software looks like. And so when we do work with a school or a district, we provide unlimited teacher usage and we provide administrator reporting on engagement, how many students are participating, ultimately how many, uh, how many teachers are using the tool. So we provide that and unlimited usage, unlimited classes, unlimited access to the universe. But then at Parlay, we understand that there's a lot of software tools out there. There's a lot of uh, competing priorities for teachers. Excuse me, there's a lot of competing priorities for teachers. And so we have another service that becomes a part of that membership. And that service is called the Parlay Concierge. So there's two main components to the Parlay Concierge. The first one is we create custom content for teachers. So I showed you KDE as an example there. So what we do is we work with teachers to say, what are you trying to teach in your classroom? what grade level is it at what's the subject or topic and then what we would do is use our framework and our methodology and our understanding of discussion questions and creating great discussion prompts and we create a prompt for that teacher and we put it in their personal parlay portfolio and they can publish it to their classroom like i said they can make any changes they want as well and then we also offer unlimited professional development and boot camps so we can do these in a group setting or in a one-on-one -on -one setting so oftentimes teachers will just click on the parlay help bubble and they'll ask for a time and we will work face to face with them in a 15 or 20 minute Google Hangout phone call to really help them get started. So we do want to support teachers and coaches throughout the whole process, knowing that time is an issue and knowing that the, the, the challenges of introducing a new tool can be overcome with great service and with doing everything you can to save teachers time. And then the last bit is the effortless setup. So we have SIS rostering uh, with Clever. And then like I said earlier, there's, there's Google and Microsoft single sign-on. So really, really easy uh, to, to get your, all the classes, et cetera, as the school or the district signed up and ready to go. So we have also learned uh, that the best way to roll out Parlay is through a pilot. The pilots are typically 60 days uh, and here's how it works. It starts um, with a very small concentrated group of, uh, of users. Um, we know that, again, there's a lot of things going on at schools and school districts. So what we do is we work with the lead to identify a pilot group. Now, typically that pilot group is one to two coaches and five or more teachers. Typically we'll see five to 10 teachers, but depending on the size of the school district and depending on what schools need to make a meaningful determination, um, we obviously are flexible to increase that as necessary. And what we try to do is make sure that those teachers are over a sort of um, a broad range of grade levels and also subject areas. So typically we'll see a few middle school teachers, a few high school teachers, language, language arts, modern languages, social studies, history, maybe one or two math and science teachers as well. So nice broad spectrum so we get that good sample size. And then in that pilot, we work to establish a foundation. So what we do is we do group or one-to-one -one training depending on what works for individual teachers, as I discussed, and then we create content for them. So when we're setting up that pilot, it's what are you trying to accomplish? How can we help you accomplish that? Then we would either co-create or just go on our own and create that round table for that teacher for their specific class context. And then after that, there's ongoing support. So we provide progress reports every two weeks and we do follow-ups with individual teachers, get that feedback, make sure that Parlay is adding the value that we expect and hope that it will add. So we really do take our pilot program very seriously and we really do work closely with teachers in the hopes that we can prove to teachers that Parlay can add a ton of value and then we can grow that beyond. So we try not to make it too invasive knowing how many things are going on in a school at any given point in time. All right, so with that, uh, if anyone has questions, there's a little Q&A bubble um, or a little Q&A down at the bottom. If anyone wanted to post questions, I'd be more than happy to open that up and, and have a look and, and see if there are any. Got to close it out. All right, looks like there's no open questions. Okay, so um, without 
further ado, I'd just like to thank everyone. It was, it was a pleasure um, being able to present to you today. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I tried to keep it short, sweet. It was less than 30 minutes. That's pretty good, actually. Um, normally, I'm quite verbose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the chat section, I'm just going to add a link. And that link is going to give you uh, access to the form if you'd like to try Parlay. You're more than welcome um, to do that. Oh, that's not the right form. Give me one second. I can stop share. Okay. All right. So in the chat, I've just sent everyone a Google form. If you'd like to learn more about Parlay, set up a conversation and or uh, try a pilot out in your classroom, in your school, in your district, whatever the case may be, please click that link. We're also going to send a follow-up email, uh, which will have the webinar record recording and uh, a number of other um, resources for you to learn more about Parlay. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, really appreciate it, everyone. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. I'll leave this open just for a few more minutes in case anyone um, is interested in, in, in learning more. Thank you so much.